Hey everyone, this is Kyle with the Hot Tip Guys on YouTube, where we're hammering out so you don't have to. And today, I'm going to show you the difference between an antivirus, an anti-malware, and a cleaner, and why you need all three to keep your computer clean. Okay, I'm back. So this is going to be a video again on uh, antiviruses, anti-malware, cleaners, and why you need all three to be able to protect your computer. Uh, so the antivirus I have on this computer here is going to be Viper. Now there's a ton of different antiviruses out there. We're going to have separate videos on how to install and use each one. Uh, so don't fret if you don't see yours necessarily on here if I'm using this one and you say you like this one better. Because in reality, a lot of antiviruses now, especially programs out there, do uh, a good job of protecting you from viruses. And I'll tell you the reason why in just a minute. Uh, so whatever you do decide to use, whether it's Norton, whether it's uh, McAfee, whether it's uh, Kapersky, Viper, uh, VAS, AVG, there's a ton of them out there. As long as you have at least one of them on there on your computer, then you're going to be safe for viruses. So what does an uh, antivirus do? Well, antivirus prevents your computer from getting infections and viruses that are designed to destroy your computer. Um, what happens when you get a virus, depending on the virus, uh, is that nine times out of ten is there to destroy what's on your computer, your data, your programs, uh, anything that you access, your pictures, your videos, your music, all that stuff. It's there to, to just wreak havoc and then infect other computers across the network. Uh, viruses are a lot more direct. They don't give a lot of people benefits when it comes to you know giving someone else a virus, unless you just don't like that particular person or if you're just targeting a business of some sort. Um, but other than that, you know, you're not going to get, um, say, for instance, uh, like a malware. You can put a malware on someone's computer, trick them to paying you money. With viruses, you don't really have that luxury because it's going to destroy the computer. Um, so that's kind uh, of, of one of the quick differences between like a malware and a virus. But you definitely need an antivirus uh, uh, on your computer because viruses have been around for years, a long time, a really, really long time. And um, you know, pretty much almost ever since computers were, were around uh, and the internet was, was created. Um, so without antivirus on your computer to protect you, uh, your stuff can just get destroyed. And um, with an antivirus program, uh, they have a, what they call large definitions. Basically, it's a, it's a library inside the antivirus to detect. Uh, it uses a, a little catalog system to detect what viruses are on your computer whether they're old viruses from say 2001 or the most latest virus from 2013 you know they're there to figure out which virus that is and just prevent that from wreaking havoc on your machine because even if you have say for instance an anti-malware program anti-malware doesn't normally keep up with uh, older viruses that you know have been around for a while so if you get a virus infection from 2002 on your computer that's now running in 2015 then if you don't have an antivirus your computer is still going to get destroyed and that anti-malware won't help you at all um, so that's uh, just one of the differences between an antivirus and anti-malware. Um, so what you want from your antivirus program are three basic things. Scans, and preferably scheduled scans, so that way you'll schedule um, to scan your computer at least once, if not twice a day, to make sure that you don't have any infections or anything like that. So it runs um, a scanner through all your hard drive, basically, and looks at all the files that you have on your computer, and it goes back into that definition to say, hey, this is a, a virus, we need to get rid of it. Uh, or, you know, this is a, a, not a virus, you know, we need to add it to the exception list. Because uh, antiviruses can sometimes find things that are false positives if it has the same name as another virus. The other two things that you want to have your antivirus be able to do is what they call email protection and active protection. So uh, email protection basically is what it says. Email protection. It will scour your computer for whatever default email program you have on there. And whenever you receive a nasty um, virus on an email attachment, before you open it, the, the antivirus, you want it to be able to prevent that from actually opening and then affecting your computer. It'll scan the email first before you actually open up the email itself. Now, there are some caveats to that um, because honestly, uh, it doesn't, it's not that uh, it, it doesn't do a good job, it's just the nature of the beast. If you receive a email uh, onto your computer and you open that file and that file has a batch on it and it runs, then the protection itself may not protect you from it, especially if it's named something that's not inside the definition book of the antivirus. Uh, so you want to be careful with that. You know, don't rely too much, uh, rely on that too much. You want to make sure that when you're opening up your emails, you know who it's from. You 
know or trust who that's from uh, and it doesn't look suspicious to you in any way uh, so you only want to keep that in mind so that way to keep you protected from any viruses that come via email but you wanted to have email protection so that way you can make sure that you know you don't get infected in case you do open up that one email that has that that nasty bug on it the other one is active protection so active protection also known as internet protection is basically it'll actively uh, look for sites or programs or infections on your computer um, not on a regular scan uh, basically um, so that way uh, you know say if I open up a, a, a browser and I go to a site that has a known virus on it uh, the active protection uh, will protect me from that virus right then and there instead of it waiting till I get infected and it's scanning and then removing it afterwards because you know even with a scan if it doesn't uh, you know scan it in time uh, and, and get rid of it or quarantine it then uh, it can destroy uh, the computer before then or mess up the antivirus program before then and then it could still, re uh, still wreak havoc uh, so that's that now with Viper I'm using Viper Business Pr um, Premium um, it's something that you can get from a lot of different resellers of Viper um, with this one I do like this one because you have a, an option for what they call a, a risk counter so basically it'll find whatever risk or things that it's protecting you from it'll put a counter on there and you can actually check out to see what it's protecting you from not all antiviruses have this because a lot of people may not care but I do like this feature just because it lets you know hey you know ever since this program has been on here it's protecting me from this many risk so it lets you know that it's actually working and that you can actually go ahead and check it um, but you know this is an overview of Viper this is again just an antivirus um, uh, explanation uh, so we'll go into more details on this and like I said a lot of antiviruses later so now that you got an antivirus on your computer you're done right you don't need to protect anything else and you, you can just go about your business and, and use um, other programs no <laughs> that's not true you want to have also an anti malware on your on your system now before you go in and say hey you know you you don't want to have two different programs running at the same time that's supposed to be protecting you they'll cause conflicts and all this other stuff a lot of you tech people out there will say that and yes you don't want to have two antivirus programs on your machine running at the same time and you don't want to have two scans running at the same time because they can cause conflicts and and you know mess things up and they won't scan right or may not find uh, or protect you from the actual viruses or malware that you're trying to get rid of but that's not to say that you don't need an anti-malware because malware is different so what is malware malware is just a bad program mal's name you know, mal is, is a uh, spanish for bad so basically it's just a bad program um, a program is considered bad when it's installing a computer that you don't want and it's trying to normally either get money out of you, uh, flood your computer up with a bunch of different pop-ups and programs and that kind of thing so that way you, it's hard to get rid of uh, and basically it's used as a, uh, a hostage technique basically to uh, have people who want to get money from you be able to get money from you. So they'll put a bad program on your computer and once it's on there you'll have a really hard time getting rid of it and they have the means to be able to get rid of it and so you'll pay them that money to get rid of it and then once you do that then they'll get rid of it and then they'll put it back on your computer later and have you pay them again so it's a really underhanded tactic it's really really bad um, that people do this I don't understand why but it does make the money so hey you know it is what it is so they're out there so what you want to do is you want to have an anti-malware program. Now the one I like to use most is Malwarebytes, and I'll explain to you the, the benefits of Malwarebytes uh, uh, in a moment. Um, but basically, it is a very, very good program. Uh, that's uh, you have to have to make sure you actually run it. Um, but once you use that, it's a very good program for scanning for malware. It keeps us up um, as definitions up to date. They do have a premium and a free version. Realistically, you just want to have the free version, especially if you already have an antivirus program scanning your computer. Um, so just get the free version so that way it doesn't do any other uh, active protection or scans on there uh, just because you won't need it since you already have an antivirus program on there update the definitions you want to make sure that the database is updated almost every day or at least every other day uh, and then you want to run a scan on your machine that's going to scan just like any other virus program is but it's going to scan for malware as well as viruses so for malware malware is most of the time a new type of you know program again that's meant to take your computer hostage that antiviruses won't find and they're normally come out really quickly uh, they're updated really quickly uh, you can get a malware for that was created today or created yesterday and uh, you know uh, they'll hop on your computer and your antivirus won't be able to protect you from it 
This is the program that will scan and be able to quarantine and protect you from it. Uh, so once you run the scan and you find all the malware that you have, you'll be able to quarantine it and get rid of it, and that's that. Now, an anti-malware program like this one won't find old viruses because it likes to keep its definitions um, what they call lighter. So that way it doesn't you know scan for too much uh, all in one time uh, and newer. So that way if it's something new or something immediate, you know it could take care of it right then and there. So it's not worrying about the virus or that program that's from 2001 or 2002. It's worried about you know, now. What's going on in 2013, 2014, 2015? That's what its definitions are based on. So you want to have a anti malware uh, scan on your computer. So how do you? Uh, how often do you run this? Realistically, if you um, unless you're not noticing anything on your, on your computer, um, I would say run it every once every three months. Good rule of thumb, just to check and make sure that you're that you're nice and protected. Um, but you know you don't have to run this every day or every other day. You, know, you want to keep the definitions and database update uh, up to date. But other than that, you don't have to scan your computer every day to make sure that your that your programs are safe. Because uh, the malware will be able to find it most of the time, get rid of it. And a lot of these bad programs on there can be uninstalled like normal programs anyway. So it's not necessarily a huge thing. Um, and some are more bad than others, but it's still one of those things that you want to keep up to date and scan once every three months. Uh, if you do notice, though, that you're starting to get pop ups, you're starting to see your computer slow down, you have a lot of programs on there that you don't know where they come from or, or what they mean, then you want to go ahead and run this right away to get rid of it. Because that's, that's why you have it, that's the purpose of it. So. There's one more thing that you want to have on your computer to make sure that your computer is taken care of. Now, this, these two, the anti-malware and antivirus, are going to be your main protection from everything else, and that's great. But after a while, even once it protects you from, let's like, say, a virus, it doesn't necessarily clean up after it. You still have registry entries inside your uh, registry that can need to get removed. You still have some folders in your in your folders that need to get removed. Some lost data that probably is just scattered after you deleted the program. So I had to get rid of that stuff. This is where Cleaner comes in. So the one that I use uh, is CCleaner. Uh, it's a very, very, very good cleaning program for Windows. Now, there's different versions for different, you know, um, uh, different cleaners for different you know, OSs. You know, you have some um, cleaners for OS X and some cleaners for Ubuntu uh, that aren't CCleaner. But CCleaner here works really, really well for Windows. You'll be able to go inside here and clean your computer um, and analyze your computer to see if it needs cleaning in the first place. Uh, and this is used for not just viruses and into malware, but for everything. So say if you have a lot of stuff in your recycle bin, if you keep forgetting to, to check that, um, for you got a, a, a history in your Internet Explorer that you want to go and clear off, or just some folders or some uh, icons that you want to go and clear off your desktop that you don't know where they came from, you want to use this to go ahead and get rid of all that excess stuff. And I'm running an analysis right now because I, re I recently cleaned my computer. Um, but, uh, you know, it's been a couple of days since I've run this, so I'm going to run it and run it today. Uh, so once you run it and you analyze it, it'll tell you how much uh, space it's going to save you by running this cleaner. And so that's one of the nicest things about, the, uh, about CCleaner is that it'll tell you what it's cleaning, how much you're saving on space, and what you need from there. Now, like I said, I cleaned this a couple of days ago, and I already have basically 500 megabytes, that's half a gig, of stuff that it needs to go ahead and, and clear off and remove. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it. And so that way I have now another five hundred megabytes of space on my hard drive. Now you don't necessarily need to do that for every you know every other day. Um, you know, some people you know are gonna be fine if you have a couple terabytes of, of a hard drive, you know, <laughs> you don't need to worry about it. But um, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, if it's using up ten gigs or twenty gigs of just space that you could just have, you might as well go ahead and get that space back by running a cleaner. So that's the purpose of CCleaner. Like I said, you do want to go ahead and run that whenever you um, uh, find or you have viruses. That way it cleans up any of the excess. And also just run it every once in a while to keep your system uh, from getting too, too bogged down with a bunch of things that it, not, it doesn't need. Um, so that's good. So that's going to go ahead and, uh, and keep you protected from that. So to summarize, what you want to have is one antivirus on your computer. That's constantly scanning. That gives you active protection uh, from um, your browser and all that kind of stuff. And email protection. So that way when you're emailing and communicating, you're going to be able to stay protected from nasty viruses that will destroy your computer. You want to have an anti-malware program so that way it will protect you from bad programs that will just slow your computer down. Cause a bunch of pop-ups in your browser, some pop-ups on your computer, or give you a lot of unwanted programs that you don't want 
uh, and it tries to hold your hostage with having you trying to pay them to get rid of the programs. You want to have an anti malware to take care of that, and you only want to run that when you start to notice your system is slowing down, uh, or that you um, you know it's been a few months and you haven't noticed anything from there. You want to go ahead and just run it just to make sure that your system is truly staying clean and that you don't have a bunch of unnecessary stuff or unnecessary pop ups on there. With those two alone, those will keep your systems protected and making sure that you don't have any other problems. Um, but you also want to remember that when you have an anti-malware, you don't want to have it use its active protections or after the scans like the antivirus will because then that could possibly, possibly cause conflicts with the, the different programs. You want to just use that to scan once in a while once your antivirus has found something or once you start to notice that your computer is slowing down. And last but not least, you want to go ahead and have a cleaner on your, on your computer, so that way it'll keep your system nice and protected and clean uh, after you got everything removed off of your computer. And it, it takes care of, like I said, a bunch of different things on on there that you may not necessarily want to have on your on your system. Uh, that's just eating up space. That's eating up valuable space on your hard drive. All right. So if you guys enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this explanation, uh, I have, we have a ton of more stuff we're going to um, cover on this. I'm going to show you how to install different antiviruses on your computer, AVG, Avast, Norton, and we're going to get them all and show you how to do the installations, what features are nice, what features uh, are not so nice, things that we like, things we like about this one, things we don't like about this one, uh, and also some other programs as well. Uh, so feel free to like this video if you liked it, what we're doing here. Um, thumbs it down if you have uh, a, a different opinion or if you want to go ahead and add on your two cents. Feel free to, or if you just don't like my voice, go ahead and thumbs it down. Um, but you know, go ahead and give us a thumbs up if you do, if you do like it. Uh, feel free to comment at the bottom of different programs that you like because the more we get of programs that you like, um, especially ones that are popular, we'll make sure to put those into a video. And uh, from there. Uh, you know, feel free to subscribe to our channel. So the more people we get to subscribe, the more people that we that we see like to watch these videos, the more we're gonna put out there. We're gonna put out as many videos as we can on the subject because we want to make sure that when you're using your system, your brand new computer, the stuff that you use for your hard-earned money, you're staying protected uh, from all these different programs and, and virus programs out there. Again, thanks for watching this video, and uh, I really appreciate you guys' time. Have a good one. Enjoy your day. And feel free to subscribe. Bye bye.